I want to go over briefly a stakeholder analysis chart. These particular charts are useful for us to not only understand the people that have stakes in our particular proposal and how that proposal would affect them and how they would affect our proposal, but they also allow us to see and map our strategy for engagement. In this case, and at this point, they're very useful for me to see from you in your final submission of the proposal and your appendices. Is it absolutely required? It is not. But let's go through what it makes for a good stakeholder analysis chart, which you may use in the future, not only for this project, but for other particular proposals or reports you put together for the workplace. So first of all, the name of the stakeholder. If you can be specific, it's great. In this case, students, faculty, and staff with disabilities is a specific stakeholder. So that's well done. The impact, influence, importance. Important for you to also tell us what you mean by impact. So this is spelled out. How much does the project impact this particular stakeholder? Notice also the metric is explained, low, medium, high. Oh, this has high impact, this particular proposal, because it's for disability services and access on campus. Influence. How much influence does this particular stakeholder have over the project, low, medium, high? Again, simply stated. Do you sometimes add an explanatory note? You are welcome to. Sometimes it's superfluous. It's just noted. Interesting, in this case, you know, it says low, and we might ask, why is it low? And that might be something that you could use. You could highlight and put a comment in the margins to explain a little bit further if you wanted to. All right. Importance. What is important to the stakeholder? So here the students would enjoy the benefits of the college experience without difficulties. The faculty and staff would enjoy the benefits of teaching and working in a college without difficulties. I think these things could be combined in a sense, but nonetheless, good. And here are the two categories I'm really looking for or would like to accentuate and would say that they're useful often for your supervisor at a job workplace um, and also in this case for yourself to map why and how you perceive the, their um, attitude toward the project. So perceived risks and benefits are a way of evaluating quickly as to how that stakeholder sees the situation. So the risks are a lack of access with time and weather conditions are extreme risks. In that case, this is a little apple oranges. This person is now interpreting the lack of access in terms of the disability service itself. The perceived risk and benefit is how this proposal, if it went into action, whether it would be helpful or not, is really what you're answering here in your risk evaluation. So what's the risk if this evaluation gets put into play? Well, really in this case, not a lot of risk. So you have to be answering that question, and you might want to be explicit in your subtitle here, the perceived risk and benefits, and then in parentheses, if this proposal is put into action, right? That would help clarify this, and you saw this getting a little bit in the woods here, but the benefits are newfound support system and positive experience, excellent, yes. So it's a given in there, but um, so here we have other players. Physical plant is on campus. If we can actually name certain people, that's often more helpful, but nonetheless, it's okay. Um, somewhat, right? Because it's hard to sometimes perceive how you were able to evaluate that if it's too generic. Over here is a strategy for engaging the stakeholders. It's fairly self-explanatory, but how would you not only contact the person, or did you contact? In this case, you're kind of retrospectively writing it, but how would you uh, approach or represent the person? So it's not only for engaging them initially and contacting them and getting information from them, but also how they might uh, engage with the proposal in its action, right, when the proposal is actually being um, fulfilled. So this one box, give yourself a little more room to kind of think about it, not just the who, what, where, when, why, of how you collect or contact them, but also the rhetorical strategy of how you might talk to them. So would it be more forward? Would it be brief? Would it be uh, now as you're looking forward as to how they might enact the proposal? Would it be um, uh, through more of an organizational matrix where that particular stakeholder works with another key administrator? And that you note that here. There's a collaborative approach, if you will. All right, so those things are noted to the right. 
all those are probably good ideas, and this is a, the one I would suggest the most. There are different other formats. Um, this is the one I've gone over the most. Note that they're not wrong to have other formats. In other words, you can you can have other particular columns, or you can use check marks as well to indicate the engagement or lack of engagement. But this is what I recommend. All right, take care, guys.